Okay, let's talk about something we've all felt. You walk into a party and boom, you feel happy, right? Or you step into a quiet office and instantly feel this knot of tension. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not just in your head. It's real science. I mean, seriously, think about it for a second. That joyful party where the laughter just kind of pulls you in. Or on the flip side, that meeting where you could practically cut the tension with a knife. You feel it instantly, don't you? Well, you weren't just imagining things. What you're feeling actually has a name, emotional contagion. It's this incredibly powerful process where you are, for all intents and purposes, catching the emotions floating around you. All right, so here's our game plan. We're going to start by confirming that, yes, catching feelings is totally real. Then we'll dive into the science of how our brains are wired for it. We'll look at how emotions go viral. And then, this is the good part, we'll get into building your own emotional shield and give you a practical toolkit. Ready? Let's go. So, section one. Let's just get this out of the way right now. Catching feelings is way more than just some cute saying. It's a documented phenomenon, a real core part of our social DNA that's backed up by tons of incredible research. Okay, here's the official definition. Emotional contagion. It's basically our tendency to automatically mimic and sync up with someone else's expressions, their voice, their posture. And then, here's the kicker, we actually start to feel what they are feeling. And this whole thing happens without us even thinking about it. It's so fast, we're talking milliseconds. So you know, when people talk about vibes or emotional frequencies, they're not totally off base. It's a metaphor, of course, we're not talking about literal radio waves, but it's a great way to think about this super fast, usually unconscious process of our brains and bodies just syncing up. Which brings us to the next big question, how? How exactly does our brain tune in to what other people are feeling? This is where the science gets really, really cool. Okay, it all kicks off with something called the facial feedback loop. And it's a super simple but powerful chain reaction. Step one, you see someone smile. Step two, without even realizing it, the muscles in your face make a tiny little smile of their own. And step three, your brain gets the message from those muscles and goes, hey, we're smiling, we must be happy. And poof, you start to feel happier. It's amazing, right? Your body literally tells your brain how to feel. And the engine driving this whole process, these things called mirror neurons. Now get this, these brain cells fire when you smile and the very same neurons fire when you just see someone else smile. It's like your brain is running a simulation of their experience in real time. This isn't just cool trivia, it's literally the neurological basis for empathy. All right, so this isn't just about you and one other person. This mechanism is how emotions go viral. That same ripple effect can spread through a whole room, an entire team, and yep, even across the internet. Think about this in a group setting, like at work. It's absolutely crucial. A single person in a bad mood can totally drag down a team's performance. On the other hand, a positive person can lift everyone up. And this is especially true for leaders. A leader's emotional state it's a massive predictor of how productive and stressed their team is going to be. Okay, I want you to look at this number. 689,003. What on earth could that be? It might look random, but it's at the heart of a huge and pretty controversial study about how emotions spread. That was the number of Facebook users in a 2014 experiment. Researchers played around with what people saw in their news feeds, making them either a bit more positive or a bit more negative. And what they found was wild. It directly changed the emotional content of what those people posted themselves. The big takeaway here is that you don't need to see a face or hear a voice. Emotions can spread through text alone. And don't just take my word for it. Here's what the researchers themselves concluded. They said that emotional states can be transferred to others, leading people to feel the same emotions without even being aware of it. I mean, wow. It just shows how deep this stuff is wired into us. Okay, so if this is all happening automatically behind the scenes, are we just helpless? Are we just emotional puppets? The answer is no. And that's what this next section is all about, building your emotional shield and taking back some control. So here's the million dollar question, right? Is this whole thing subconscious? Are we just stuck soaking up every emotion around us? Or can we actually do something about it? Good news, not necessarily. The absolute first step is just being aware of it, just noticing, hey, I think I'm catching this person's stress. That awareness alone is huge. There's a technique called cognitive reappraisal, which is just a fancy way of saying you reframe the situation. 
you consciously tell yourself, okay, that's their feeling, not my feeling. And research shows this can literally interrupt that automatic process. Now, you've probably wondered about this. Are some people more sensitive than others? We all know that one person who's like an emotional sponge, right? Someone who just seems to feel everything. Is that a real thing? Oh yeah, 100%. The research is super clear on this. If you have higher levels of empathy, if you're just naturally better at tuning into how other people feel, you're also going to be more susceptible to catching those feelings. It's kind of the flip side of a really beautiful trait. Your superpower for connection also makes you a little more vulnerable. All right, let's land the plane. Knowing all this is great, but what can you actually do with it? So this final section is your practical toolkit. These are real, concrete strategies for creating a healthier emotional environment for yourself. Okay, here we go. Four science-backed strategies. First, monitor. Start paying active attention to the emotional weather in the rooms you're in. Second, practice mindfulness. This helps you create a little buffer, a space between someone else's emotion and your reaction to it. Third, model intentionally. Don't just be a receiver. Be a broadcaster. Be the source of the positive vibe you want in the room. And fourth, limit exposure. This one's huge. It is perfectly okay to set boundaries and protect your energy from sources that are constantly negative. So, I want to leave you with this one thought. Now that you know that emotions are literally contagious and that you're broadcasting a signal all the time, what feeling are you going to choose to spread today? Thanks for watching. Reality X Decoded isn't official teaching. We simply explore and aim to stay as accurate as possible. If anything seems off or you have questions, comment below and let us know what to decode next. Don't forget to subscribe.